1987, I was 12 years old. I grew up in a third world country in Africa. I remember that outside of my village, there were these massive rock formations that me and my friends would often play in. One of our favorite games was hide and seek. One day all the children got together and planned on having the biggest hide and seek game we had ever played. Myself and two others were selected as the seekers and we would count to 50 in an alley behind the marketplace and then look for the hiders in the rocks. After about 15 minutes of searching, we didn't find anyone. We were confused because it was an unspoken rule that you could only hide in the rock formations. So we decided to look through the marketplace and the rest of the village. Still, nothing. When one of us noticed something in the distance. For some context, beyond the cluster of rocks was a desert that expanded for miles. There were these unmoving figures on the horizon. The best way to describe them is that they looked like scarecrows. Small scarecrows hoisted onto pikes sticking out of the ground. We ran back to our village screaming. Everything else is a blur to me. I only remember certain parts. Chaos broke out in the village. Our huts were burned to the ground and my father threw me onto a truck before he was gunned down in front of me. Nearly everyone I knew died that day. My name is Samuel O'Brien and I am originally from Somalia. What happened to my people is often referred to as the Isaac Genocide. On May 22nd of 2019, deputies from the San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office in Texas were dispatched to a deeply wooded area of the Sam Houston National Forest after receiving a 911 call regarding a deceased adult female discovered there. The female was identified as 59-year-old Rhonda Richardson. She was a corrections officer with the Polunsky Unit of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice at the time. Rhonda lived very close to the area where her body was found. She was found face down and she was scalped. San Jacinto County Sheriff's Office Sergeant Gary Sharpen said that a set of ATV tire track impressions were found next to the body. He also said it was strange for Rhonda to be in the woods because she was afraid of the woods, particularly snakes and other animals. Gary Sharpen was involved in creating a timeline of events leading up to her body being discovered. He said the day before, Rhonda's dogs had run off into the National Forest. She then went around asking some of her neighbors to help her look for the dogs. One of the people that volunteered to help was her neighbor Robert Dale Clary. Several witnesses told investigators that Clary was the last person seen with Rhonda. Clary was also the person who found Rhonda's body according to Sergeant Gary Sharpen. Instead of calling 911 to report finding his neighbor's body, Clary went and spoke with several family members about the discovery. He never even called 911. He didn't stop and call authorities. He didn't do anything, Sharpen said. I mean, just that alone was really odd and bizarre. In addition to not calling the police, Clary's behavior also included him returning to the area where he found Rhonda's body and taking several photographs and bringing his nephew to the body and telling him to call 911. Authorities believed Clary was responsible, but unfortunately, lacked sufficient evidence for an arrest. Sharpen says in recent years, investigators were able to obtain new information. Cell phone technology placed Clary and Rhonda both on the trail where she was found when Rhonda's phone showed she stopped moving. An additional witness also came forward and provided critical information for investigators. Criminal District Attorney for San Jacinto County Todd Dillon said, we happened across a witness in this case that we knew was out there, but we had never been able to identify or locate. We happened across this witness and it really was just the last piece of the puzzle we needed to get a warrant. This all led to 65 year old Robert Dale Clary being arrested in November of 2022 for taking Rhonda's life and dumping her body in the woods. 
Clary had reportedly been charged with one count of indecency with a child in 2007 and served time behind bars after being convicted on three separate driving while intoxicated charges. He is currently being held in the San Jacinto jail on a $750,000 bond.